All right, so a quick run through on the on the high flow. Um, everybody should have seen the protocol that came out from Dr. Margolis. Um, we got that up and running, and the high flow is now on every T1. Um, we're going to focus on the out-of-house stuff. There'll be more education coming for the in-house way of doing this, but we're going to focus on just the out-of-house stuff right now because in the midst of this COVID pandemic, high flow is becoming a very valuable tool to keep these people off the ventilator. We're starting to learn if we can keep them off the ventilator, they do much, much better. So high flow is becoming a much more valuable tool. So uh, we got high flow on all the T1s, like I said. I'm going to walk through the push pack or the little bag of stuff you're going to need for it that'll be pre-packaged. Um, and then you're going to grab a heater and the T1, and that's everything. You, that's all the equipment you'll need. So in your little push pack here is a prepackaged heater pot and uh, two limbs, <clears throat> a bottle of water, a length of tubing. It'll either be clear or blue. It's a long 30-inch length of tubing. Uh, it's one, two, three, four, five sections. You'll have a set of cannulas, a small, medium, and uh, large, and the vast majority of patients are going to end up with a medium. The other thing to keep in mind is that a lot of the hospitals we pick up from use these exact same cannulas, so you may not actually have to use our cannulas. You may be able to just take the cannula from the bedside. Um, you just want to be able to look at the, the connection, the way that the cannula connects to their system. If it looks like the end of an ET tube or it looks like the end of vent tubing, um, and I'll show that to you on this cannula here. Essentially, it's just a looks like a chunk of vent tubing on the end. If it looks like that and it'll fit on your stuff, then you should be able to just take their cannula. And that makes it even easier because you can leave it on the patient um, and you just connect it up. Uh, and then the last two things that are in this bag is a yellow cable with a yellow end and a blue cable that's got a blue end. Um, and we'll walk, we'll talk about those uh, when we get the heater up and running. But so that's what's in your that's what's in your push pack. Make sure that that's in there. It should be. We're going to prepackage these and have them uh, have them waiting for you. So we'll put all this stuff back in here. Put that back away, and we'll use the stuff that we already have open, the, the training stuff here. So first thing you're going to do uh, when you get to the bedside. You can do this ahead of time or you can do this when you get to the, the bedside at the ascending facility. But you're going to have an IV pole on the left side of the stretcher and we're going to connect the heater to that. So you'll need to grab a heater humidifier before you leave. Uh, put this back over here. And it just connects to the pole with a screw clamp. Then you're going to take your T1, and it's going to sit on the rail. So no matter if you have the wing stretcher or this style stretcher, it's going to connect to the rail here, just like that. And you'll run your oxygen up wherever you got your O2 tank. Next thing you're going to do is open up your uh, heater humidifier bag, that prepackaged bag I was talking about that had the two limbs of tubing and the heater pot. So, oh. You're going to take the heater pot out and you're going to push down your little blue thing here and you're going to slide that underneath the, the lip. So we'll do that one more time. This silver rim slides up underneath this lip on the outside and it just clips in. You're going to have, this is already open because we've been doing some training with it, but you're going to have the uh, an IV spike wrapped around the top of this. You'll just unwrap that, spike your water bottle, and then hang it from your uh, IV pole. Ideally, we're going to try and get a bunch of these little carabiners to hang from there because the way the, uh, the, way the bot water bottle hangs without the little carabiner, it's been breaking the water bottles. You, know, you can see it puts a lot of weight on it and it's been breaking the water bottles. So ideally we'll get some of these little carabiners to, uh, to clip on here and be able to clip. 
put this water bottle into there and it'll hang a little more nicely. All right, the chamber is going to auto fill um, up with the, the amount of water that it's supposed to have. You don't need to do anything. There's a little float, kind of like a little toilet float in there, a little float that, that fills that up to an appropriate level. All right, so the next thing you're going to do is you're going to get your length of blue tubing, blue or clear tubing, the long one. You're going to connect it to the inspiratory side of your ventilator and then over to one of the two inlets on the heater pot. Doesn't matter which one. In that same bag with the, the heater pot were these two limbs. You've got a, a simple single limb and then you've got a limb that has a couple adapter, adapter points on it and then a 90 degree angle, 45 degree angle, whatever that angle is on the other end. You need to hang on to this. Go ahead and throw that back inside the bag that you pulled all that belongings bag that you pulled everything out of along with your other cannulas. Um, you'll end up giving this to respiratory therapy when you get to the hospital. Um, you're replacing this limb with this blue piece of tubing uh, just because it's not long enough. The other limb is your heat, what you call the heated limb. Um, it's going to go on the other side of here, but the first thing you want to do is you want to put your blue wire on. So your blue wire's got a couple different connections. It's got a 90 degree angle on the one side. You're going to take that 90 degree angle and you're going to put it at the patient end. You're going to pull this little blue end out and put your, push your 90 degree adapter in. And then on the other end, down on the 90 degree or 45 degree angled end here, on the one side you're going to pop this out. Just kind of un, undo that. And then if you look closely, there's a little triangle on there. There's a little triangle on the blue wire. You're going to push those two together. And you're going to fit those two triangles together. Just kind of push them together. They're pressure fitted. Okay? Now along the length of the tubing will be some clips. You're going to go ahead and clip the wire underneath those. Okay. And then you can go ahead and put this onto this side of the uh, heater pot. And then on the side of the heater, which you'll be able to see better in the PowerPoint, we have some close-up shots of this. There's two uh, ports on either side, one blue and one yellow. You're going to hook the blue wire to the blue port. Pretty straightforward. And then bring that up to the patient. All right, so now we need to add the yellow wire. So yellow end into the yellow port. And then the yellow wire has a block in the middle of it and then two, two limbs. One that's got a two-prong end and the other one's got a three-prong end um, coming off of this block. The two-prong end is the longer one. You're going to use the shorter one and you're going to connect it to the end, the very end of your uh, heated limb. It's actually what powers the heater coil, the heater wire that's inside there. Okay? So that's your setup. And then on the patient end, ideally you're going to already have an OptiFlow cannula or a cannula that's compatible um, on the patient. So you'll just disconnect it from their high flow system if they're on high flow and you'll connect it to, uh, to ours. If they're not on high flow or they're on a system that's not compatible, they don't need to use ours. You'll take it out of the package. Uh, there's some fitment guidelines in the PowerPoint that's going to come out. But you'll go ahead and put it on just like any other nasal cannula. And then the far end just clips together like that. And we'll put it on our man here. Like that. All right. So the next step is we've got to set the actual ventilator up. So you're going to go ahead and turn it on.
you're going to hit modes, and then in the same line as the non-invasives, you've got NIV, NIVST, and then high flow O2. You're going to click on high flow O2. You're going to confirm it. You're going to get your settings, a flow rate and an oxygen. So we're going to turn the oxygen down 21% just so it doesn't yell at us. And then we'll turn the flow up to, we're going to put it at 40 liters. So we're going to turn our flow to 40 liters. We'll hit confirm. And then just like with any of the other modes, it's going to take you back out to the front, the front screen. You're going to hit start therapy. And it's that easy. You don't need an expiratory valve. You don't need a flow sensor. You just need this setup. Um, so all it's doing at this point is basically creating its own med air uh, with the blow air and blending in whatever oxygen you, uh, you set it at. When we get to the bedside, um, so you'll see in the in the PowerPoint that you want to call whatever call the ASCOM of the respiratory therapist of whatever unit you're going to. Let them know that they only need to get the pole, not the disposables, because you're going to give them all these disposables. Um, so you call them and just say, "Hey, I'm coming in with high flow. I have all your disposables set up on my equipment. All you're going to need is your your pole." Um, You'll get up to the bedside, and what you're going to do is you'll end up putting your ventilator into standby. You'll disconnect the yellow wire, the blue wire, pop the heater pot out, and you'll end up handing them this whole thing. You want to make sure that you're going to give them this other piece of tubing that you saved uh, because they're, going to want to, they're not going to want your blue tubing. They're going to want to go to this piece of tubing for their setup because their, their stuff's closer together. Um, and then you're going to ask them for blue wires and yellow wires. They should give you a set of blue wires and a set of blue wires back, like clean ones. And they'll just continue to use your set. All right, that's it. If you guys have any questions, uh, reach out to myself or any of the other super users on this, Ben, um, Sean, and, uh, and Aaron, or, or Brian Laquito. Um, all super users on this this equipment. So if you guys have any questions, you you let us know. And uh, good luck.